Hello. I'm Greg Solomon. And this is my video clip concerning the ethics versus the legality of downloading MP3s and file sharing. Um, you know, years ago, uh, back when uh, cassette tapes were in vogue, when you would go to your local music store and buy cassette tapes before the day of uh, CDs, it was very common to record a song for someone, somebody at work for instance, you'd get the cassette tape of um, just for instance the Rolling Stones, Some Girls, and maybe somebody at work wanted you to record a couple of songs off of it, or a montage of songs, and, and you'd do it, and it was not considered any big deal, I mean there were a lot of blank um, cassette tapes at music stores just for that purpose. Music companies in the RIAA didn't really have a big problem with it because it didn't have the global effect that it's now having with the uh, advent of the internet. You see, where before, years ago, I might go to work and say, um, ask Joe Blow at work if he could give me a copy or copy a, um, a Beatles tape for me or Rolling Stones, <coughs> excuse me, or an Eric Clapton tape or something and um, he'd copy it and bring it in the next day and I might do the same for him down the road a little ways, copy something that I have. Well, with the advent of the internet, it's basically doing the same thing. Except now instead of asking Joe Blow at work, you're asking on the internet um, to get a copy of something from Joe Blow who maybe lives all the way across country or maybe on the other side of the world. It's the same difference and now the RIAA has a big problem with it all of a sudden. Reason being, money. It's always this. It always comes down to money. Trust me, the RIAA, um, all of these other sanctioning bodies and corporations, record companies, they are not concerned with what is ethical and what is not ethical. They are concerned with what takes money out of their pocket. That's their main concern. Um, actually, when you think about it, corporations are, are the greedy ones. And the individuals who are out on the uh, internet sharing files seems to be the ones who are not so greedy. Matter of fact, the internet almost seems like one big communist community. And by communism, I don't mean socialism where the state owns everything. I mean communism in its purest form. And that's not to say that I am a communist. It's merely to say that I see a lot of sharing, unselfish sharing going on <coughs> out on the internet, people will freely upload music, um, software, everything will upload it and are very helpful with other people and are very willing to share files and music, whatever. Um, some of these corporations though, multi-million dollar corporations and some multi-million dollar uh, recording artists have a big problem with it. It's as if they want to squeeze as much juice out of that grape as they can. Um, some bands didn't have much of a problem with it. The Grateful Dead never did. They would actually set up um, booths at their concerts and people could go ahead and record as much as they wanted. And things were traded out on the internet. Still are to this day. And uh, Grateful Dead still has a big following over 30 years and going strong. But let me talk about, as I said, the ethics versus the legality of file sharing and downloading. Now, if I go to a music store and I'm looking through the racks of CDs and let's say I find 
a music CD that I really want. If I look around behind me to each side and take this music CD and put it down in my shirt or in my pants and take it out the door, that is stealing. Common sense, logic would dictate that stealing. You have a tangible item here. You have deprived the store of it. They paid record a company for it. You've deprived the store of it. And you've deprived the person who was going to buy it because it's no longer there. You put it under your shirt and took your little ride home and played, played it in your CD player and added it to your CD collections. However, if I go out on the internet and download a file of the same CD, I'm actually not taking the file, I'm just downloading a copy of it. So I'm leaving intact what I found. As a matter of fact, if it's a BitTorrent network, not only am I leaving it intact, but with BitTorrent you actually seed the file some more so other people can download it. Uh, nothing in a store is being touched, no tangible item is being taken. It's just merely basically doing what uh, Joe Blow did 25 years ago when he would make a copy of a few songs on a cassette tape and bring to work for you. It's the same difference. Same thing with a piece of software. If I go into um, Office Max or one of the other uh, business or computer stores and take a piece of software, do the same thing, put it in my shirt, go out the door with it, that's stealing. I've deprived the um, I've deprived the, the company that's selling it of a tangible product. Um, I've deprived any customers in the store of one less copy of that product. However, if a person were to go out on the internet and download a file of this exact same software, once again, he's leaving everything intact that he's found. He's merely downloading a copy of it. Nothing in a store is being touched. No one is actually being deprived of it. Let me give you a little demonstration here to show you how business law is actually structured. American business law is, instru is structured to ensure that corporations and businesses make the absolute most amount of profit. Ethics takes a second seat to it. Um, let me give you a very tangible example. I went to a major department store not too long ago. <clears throat> I needed a by a spindle of blank CDs. I'm sure many of you have seen these these spindles right here. There's usually about 50 CDs in a spindle. So I was looking through the CDs and they're not open like this. They usually have plastic shrink wrap with printing and graphics around it so you can't really see in at the CDs. But you can see what it is, or Memorex, or Maxell, or whatever. And it's a basically, I said, a 50 CD uh, spindle. Well, I saw this um, spindle of Memorex blank CDs. And um, the price of the spindle was about, about um, $2.50 less than the other 50 CD spindles. I usually don't get Memorex. Um, I'm usually more of a fan of Fuji or Maxell, but it's $2.50 less and, and it seemed like a, for what I needed it for, I wasn't really going to be recording music where I needed anything that great, high quality. Memorex um, would suffice quite handily. So I went ahead and bought it and I took it home. I'm coming up on the 10 minute time limit <coughs> to this video. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to create a second part and I will tell you and demonstrate to you what happened when I got that spindle home.